For those of us who work at the EPA, this is our day. And congratulations for the stellar, the stellar work that you do and the important work you do. This is actually the 38th Earth Day. The first in 1970, I was in high school. Some of you know this story. I organized my high school on the first Earth Day. We cleaned up trash alongside the railroad tracks. We took it to a local landfill. We were very proud of ourselves until about 15 years later when I was in Washington, D.C. as the Deputy Assistant Administrator for the Office of Solid Waste and Emergency Response. Was looking at the list of new Superfund sites and noticed that the local landfill I took it to was on the list of NPL sites. <laughs> Thus making me, I believe, don't listen Bob Kaplan, and <laughs> a responsible party. <laughs> So no good deed goes unpunished. But think about how far we have come through your good efforts and those of all the sorts of people who are dedicated to protecting our environment over the last 38 years. This year, we're issuing across the Great Lakes states an unprecedented challenge to people. We're asking them to collect one million pounds of electronic waste and one million pills that need to be properly disposed of. And think about where we were 38 years ago. The issues then were things like the Cuyahoga River burning, or non Big River, the Randy Newman song. There were issues like turning on your lights when going around the south side of Lake Michigan because of the pollution, the air pollution from all the iron and steel mills. Well, those issues we've dealt with and dealt with appropriately and well, with many thanks to my colleagues here at Region 5. But look at the new issues we're facing, ones we didn't even anticipate in 1970. Electronic waste, cell phones, computer screens, all of the gadgets that we've come to rely on that are new and that we've never used before. And now this new emerging issue, the one that we really don't know as much as we need to know about, but we're just starting to focus on pharmaceuticals in our water supplies, our not drinking water. And so this is a really important thing I think that we're doing in terms of issuing this challenge to the citizens of the Great Lakes to collect unused and unwanted electronics and pills to make sure that the toxics don't go into our river and water bodies and to the Great Lakes. This is an important thing I think we're doing in terms of protecting the Great Lakes and raising public awareness. Today I'd like to thank, as we kick off this event here at the Metcalf Federal Building, um, our federal partners. We're co-sponsoring this event with the U.S. Postal Service. Um, General Services Administration has cooperated with us in terms of providing space for the event. We work closely with the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois to establish this collection event, and we're being assisted by the uh, Chicago City Police Department to make sure that the unwanted medications that we're turning in today are properly and legally disposed of. So I want to thank all of them for joining us in doing this, as well as my colleagues on the Federal Executive Board for their support as well. Well, as I said, we're doing something unprecedented this year. We've decided to reach out to the public who cares so deeply about the Great Lakes, as we saw last summer when we heard the outpouring of their concern about pollution going into the Great Lakes from some of the industries around the lakes. And what we decided we wanted to do is capitalize on that passion and concern for the Great Lakes and give people something they could do about it, a way they could participate and make a difference. And so we've issued this challenge, and I think that early re preliminary results, because election events have already started occurring all across the region, um, shows that it's going to be an unprecedented success. Last week in Milwaukee, last Saturday in Milwaukee at Miller Park, they held a pharmaceutical collection event. Over a thousand households participated, and two tons of unwanted prescription medicines were collected. Can you imagine? Two tons. Last Saturday here in Chicago at DeVry University on North Campbell, over 3,500 households participated in a collection for e-waste. Another unprecedented event in the Chicago area. I understand from some of our colleagues that were there that it blocked, that the, the, the traffic went black back for blocks upon blocks. They had to do loops, and people waited because they cared. Um, I was at my Starbucks this morning, and I mentioned that I was doing this event and had three baristas to say, where can I take my computer? This, <laughs> this is, this is a, a, an issue that's important and resonating, and we need to capitalize on it. So I am glad that you're here. Why is this challenge so important? Well, as you guys know better than most, the Great Lakes are an irreplaceable resource. They provide 85% of North America's fresh surface water. 85%. Millions of us, literally millions of us across the Great Lakes region get our drinking water supply from, from these lakes and they are a major source of commerce and recreation for all of us in the upper Midwest. They are indeed irreplaceable. If something happens to the Great Lakes, it would dramatically affect all of our lives and our economy. So what we want to do is show people that they can make a difference. 
Just one cell phone, one bottle of pills is something that doesn't go into the environment and is extremely helpful. People gathered some stats for me that I think are sort of powerful. Do you know that one computer screen can contain as much as four to six pounds of lead? One computer screen, four to six pounds of lead. Absolutely astonishing. All those rechargeable batteries that we have in all of our electronic gadgets, they contain another heavy metal, cadmium. We need to keep that out of our ecosystem and out of our lakes. So um, those LCD backlit screens that we all have, they have mercury, and it goes on and on. By recycling these electronics or reusing them appropriately, we keep those toxins out of, our, out of our ecosystem, and we also are able to recover valuable metals like silver, gold, and copper and reuse them. In addition to keeping toxics out of our lakes, what we're also doing is something really profound in terms of energy savings. Some interesting statistics that I garnered from um, people that have been working on this. If, if we had recycled, by the way, get this stat, in 2005, over 100 million cell phones were discarded in the United States. One year, 100 million cell phones. If we had managed to recycle those properly, we would have gathered enough energy to supply 200,000 homes, 200,000 homes in the United States with power for one year. This is dramatic stuff, guys, and it happens one cell phone by one cell phone, one computer screen by one computer screen. And so we are glad that people are participating um, to bring in their electronic goods and make sure they're properly disposed of and to learn about the fact they need to do that in the future. As to pharmaceuticals, as I said, it's a new emerging issue. We don't know as much about it as we want to. We're studying it. The EPA has a four-pronged program to understand what data is out there, to gather more information. It's dedicated to doing appropriate regulations as we find more out about it. But one of the hallmarks right now is we try and learn more about the effects of pharmaceuticals on us in terms of long-term impacts at these low levels is to do pollution prevention. Let's stop getting this stuff into our system before it can cause harm. We know that that's a smart move no matter what. And hence, today's efforts and this week's effort and the challenge is focused on those toxic um, um, equipment and pills and so forth and to keep them out of the environment. Today at the Metcalf Center, what we're asking people to do is take their unwanted, unused, expired, either over-the-counter medicines or um, uh, prescription medicines and to properly dispose of them. They'll end up being incinerated and they will not cause harm and they'll be incinerated in a way in which um, the, air, the air is protected as well. And so I think I am the first person to toss them into the bin. Yes, I am. <laughs> Watch this. my senior managers that have their prescriptions to come up now and do it as well. Phil, others. And do remember guys, for your privacy, if you have things you want to toss out that have your name or address on it, feel free to black them out or pull off the labels. In addition, in addition, we're going to throw out, we already have the ability to get rid of small electronic gadgets, ones that can be put in these mailers and sent away as being properly reused or disposed of. And so if you have small electronic gadgets, cell phones, mouses, um, those kinds of things that fit in these kinds of bags, I urge you to get rid of them today. Uh, so we're off and I think running to a really good start. I can't thank you, of you, all of you at United States Environmental Protection Agency for the work you do every day, tirelessly, with passion and conviction. You really make a difference and I'm very proud of you. So happy Earth Day, guys. Yay.